I invite the church to stand up and open, open our Bibles, the Word of God in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. The, the theme of the study this morning, this first part, will be uh, being uh, spies in the land of Canaan. And as uh, we're going to proceed in this class, there is going to be a participation of the church, of the pastor, Pastor Ronildo, Pastor Sabado, and the brethren here present. Every time you desire, you may uh, interrupt us and participate with us. The word says the following. Chapter, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send me to spy out the land of Cana, which I am giving to the children of Israel, from each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. The church may be seated. Our objective this morning, as we bring this message, is to establish, establish a parallel between what the people was living at this moment of uh, what the word was the message was describing and uh, the time that we're living at this last time because the people of the, those days they were about to enter into the land of Cana In the same way, we as the Church of the Lord, we are living the time called Time of the Near. And the people, they were going to enter into the land of Canaan. And we, we are going to inherit the heavenly Canaan that the Lord will show for us, he was going to say, Come, blessed of my Father, right? Possess us inheritance. And there are, my brethren, many particularities of this moment in which the people was living compared to what we are living in this t moment. So let us see. The Bible says that the Lord spoke to Moses. And the Lord also is speaking to us at this time. How good. I want to highlight this here. How good it is to hear the voice of the Lord. And the Lord told him, Send men that spy on the land of Canaan. It was closed. They were closed to the entrance, but the Lord gave an instruction to Moses. Send men in order to spy on the land. And what was the instruction? Send men that will spy the land that I'm, about, I'm going to give to the children of Israel. So now I ask, who was going to give the land of Canaan to the children of Israel? It was the Lord. And then the instruction was this. You will send one man from each tribe. Well, Israel had how many tribes? It had 12. Can the brethren speak with me? The first tribe, Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Issachar, Ephraim, Benjamin, Zebulun, Manassas, Dan, Asher, Naphtali, and Gate. Gat. And from each tribal from uh, described here, the Lord instructed Moses to choose one man. So, uh, as we continue, the word says, my brethren, that the Lord gave to Moses uh, 
few instructions in order to be spoken to those 12 spies that were going to spy on the land, or they were not going to spy the land recklessly, without any direction, without any instruction. And I'll, I'll say also, blessed be the name of the Lord, we are walking towards heavenly Canaan, but we have a direction. The direction is of the Holy Spirit. The direction is of the Lord. Nothing. We have not lacked anything. Not a single detail. The Lord has instructed us in all things during our walk. The most important word that comes to us is that we should not deviate from the right or to the left. Let us continue. Which were those uh, instructions? It is in the word. Moses said, See that the land is. See how the land is and the people that inhabit there. And he continues saying, Be strong. If they are strong or weak, it's in the word. If there are few or many, and in what land that they inhabit, what, what kind of land do they have? If it is good or bad, because the Lord doesn't have, uh, the Lord always has the best for His people. I'm going to group it. God doesn't have what is bad for us. He only has the best. Let's continue. And which were the cities? in which you inhabit. But the Lord also gave all the instruction. If it is uh, on plain cities or a fortress, if, and look at the land, if it is uh, strong or weak, if there are trees or not, you want to see, my brethren, the riches of details. Nothing was uh, escaped. Everything was described. There was a, a message. Be strong and take of the fruit of the land. My brethren, we are on a walk here. And I tell you, my brother and sister, we need to make an effort. Because what awaits us is Is what awaits us is something exceeds everything that we have here. What we awaits there is something extraordinary. But it's necessary that you and I that desire to enter into this heavenly canon, we can do this. We need to make an effort. And to say that word, a thousand fall on my side and the other on the other side but I want to enter to the heavenly canon and, and I'm going to make an effort I'm not going to be um, bothered and then he continues saying a branch of vine with a, a cluster of uh, grapes which uh, the man brought and when they came to the land it was the beginning of the harvest and they and they gather the fruits from the land and from the fruits that I'm going to mention here the brethren will realize that the land that they went to spy was it a good or a bad land? It was a good land. The word says that they picked up what? A cluster of grapes. Was it a, not like just a normal type, normal kind of uh, cluster of grapes? No. The Bible says that two men had to carry it. The fruit of the land was very good. I was imagining, thinking about this, what awaits us in the heavenly canon. Streets of gold. There, there is not going to be any crying or pain. There's not going to be any sadness. Isn't it true? The glory of the Lord. Uh, uh, we're not going to leave this light here. The glory of the Lord is going to light up the place. Angels, archangels, cherubims. They are going to be with us, praising the Lord. The land of the Canada that they went to spy was a very good land. 
what are the fruits that they went there to pick up? Nobles, fruits. Romans, fig. Pomerane and figs. So the land that went to spy and the fruits that they picked up was a very good land. Now, after uh, the period in which they stay in the land that we spied, picking up of the fruit, the big cluster of, of grapes, picking up of the other fruits that the brethren could see, the pomerang and figs. Now they come back to the land of Cana because there was a congregation that was waiting for them and one of a testimony from them, uh, a report from what they had seen. So everything that the people wanted was to hear from the spies, whatever they had seen. And then they come back after 40 days. They came back to Moses and the entire congregation. And the Bible says, they gave account of what they had brought, the fruit of the land, and they said, yes, we went there, we spied, we spied for 40 days, the land is good, here's the fruit. So then they showed the fruit of the land, and truly, the brother can read with, with us here, it flows honey and milk from that land. The land is very good. And this is the fruit. They show the fruit. Like if they were saying, we want, we've seen, but we also brought the fruit. Here it is. And now I ask, was there any doubt of how good the land was? No. So then I picked up a couple of pictures here, so the brethren, by faith, <laughs> will be able to see about them seeing the fruit. Here, the cluster of grapes are being carried by the two men here. And uh, they are arriving to Moses and Aaron in the congregation, and then they show the fruit of, of the land. Hey, my brethren. There was, in the presence of the people, the report that the land was a good land. And then it happened that after they returned and after they showed the fruit, ten of the twelve spies, they began to bring to the people a word that we are going to say here. And the word was appropriate of someone that goes, see the fruit, picks up uh, in their hand and testifies that the land was very good, but gives more importance of what they see around them than the fruits that they had in their hands. And here it is, the first of many in regards to what we're going to do here this morning, what awaits us in the heavenly Cana, as I said, exceeds everything that we know here. And in our trajectory towards the heavenly Cana, we need to be always, my brethren, with a different vision. We should not look at the obstacle. Repeat with me as an obstacle. We should not look uh, a trial as a trial, an adversity as an adversity, but we have to have a different vision. We need to look at difficult things as an opportunity. And the Lord is going to give us a great victory. That's the truth. Out of the twelve that went, ten came back, looking more at the difficulties that they saw around them, than to giving worth to the land and of the fruit that they had gathered in their hands. And now, with possession of this report, they began to say, the people, therefore, that inhabits on this land, 
they began to say is a powerful people. And I ask you, as my friend said once, and so what is the problem if these people were strong? Or God is more powerful. Isn't it true? All the power is in his hands. If, is, if, if with strong hand he took the people out of Egypt, wouldn't it allow us, allow them to enter into that land? Because it was a promise. And I want to tell you something very clear. If the Lord has made you a promise, He's faithful. And I tell you more, He is powerful. To fulfill this promise, He will move heaven and earth, whatever is necessary. You know why? Because He will fulfill with His word, because He is powerful. And then there's a strong uh, uh, cities. And then I see the children of Anaki, the Amalekites, inhabit their land in the land of the south. The Etios, Zebuseus, Amorios, the inhabitant land. The Canaanites uh, inhabit close to the sea and the uh, region Jordan. And all of it. Now all those ten spies, <coughs> they w uh, were able to place um, to report to the people. But amongst the twelve, there was there were two, and especially one that had a different vision that manifested, and his name was Caleb. And what did Caleb do? So Caleb made uh, the people silence in the presence of Moses and said, look at what, what a different vision he had. Read with me. Let us go up with, uh, and let us possess an inheritance because surely we will prevail against them. So that's the word that I want to leave for you, my brother and sister, this morning. There is a canna that awaits us, the heavenly canna. The obstacles are going to be placed in front of me, in, your, in front of you. Maybe the trials, many are going to be the trials and the difficulties to prevent you from entering to them. But the word for you, my brother and sister, is the same. Go, be encouraged. Go, trust in the Lord. Because the Lord is powerful to give us the victory. If the Lord, according to the word, if He is for us, who is going to be against us? Greater is the one who is with us. So the heavenly canon is awaiting for us. We are living the moment of the near. And it's not time for us to have a vision like those ten that went and saw more of the difficulties. But we need to have the same vision as Caleb. Let us go up with, uh, and be encouraged. Caleb also said, he didn't say probably we will prevail against them. No, it was a word of a servant that knew the God he served. He said, because surely we will prevent, prevail against, against it. It is Numbers 13.30. So let us continue. Even with this word, if you, uh, if the pastor can collaborate, even with this word, those that went also said, we cannot go against these people because they are stronger than us. Can I do anything? Can you do anything? No, but in the Lord we can do all things. They defamed the land that they had, had spied on. And the presence of the children of Israel saying, This is a land that consumed their own inhabitants. And there, there are men there of great stature. We've seen giants, children of Anak. And they were. Uh, to our eyes, they were like uh, locusts. 
And this was the vision of these ten spies, the vision of uh, Caleb, and the vision of jo Joshua is different. I don't want to be persistent on this. If the bread desire to enter into the heavenly canon, he has to have a, a different vision. The trial knocked at the, your, your door, the difficulty, and but you are going to say the following. At this moment, in which I will see the great victory the Lord is going to give me in His presence. Let us continue. Everything that we are saying is in the Word. And now, what do they want? They want to go, go back to Egypt. They left that place. God took them away from Egypt with strong hand, with signs and wonders and with miracles. And they saw with their own eyes the great operation of the Lord. And now, when they spy the land, they pick, pick up the fruits on their hands, they testify that the land is good, but they give more importance of what they see around them. They want to do what we should not do. They want to go back to Egypt. And I want to remind the bread, those that were not born here in the um, Christian home. I was not, in my case, I was not born in a Christian family. When the Lord took you away from the world, He took you away f with a strong hand. And you know what the Bible says? There was a celebration in heaven when you repented. And I think, how was my own uh, feast? The feast of pastor and your feast. And I say, my brother, our stay here or permanence here was a miracle. Because salvation is a miracle in a man's life. So then they got up. The whole congregation got up. They raised their voice and going go a little faster. They cried during that night and did something that the Christian servant should never do. I'm going to repeat it. A Christian should never do, which was what my church? The murmur. They murmured against Moses and Aaron. Which they were in the government of the people at that time. And they said, if we stayed, uh, I, I hope that we stayed in the land of Egypt. Is there anything good in the land of Egypt? No. Well, uh, I hope we died in Egypt or we died in, in the desert. Why is the Lord bring us to this land? You know, the first to be killed by the sword and our men and children be um, pray. Wouldn't that be better to go back to Egypt? And I, I keep saying, my brother, no. would it be better to go back to the life that we used to live? If what awaits us exceeds everything that we know. Would it be better to go back to the old life, to the old things? God didn't call us to be defeated. God called us to be victorious in His presence. The victory is already ours. It's mine, it's yours. It's guarantee of the Lord. But they prefer to do this, they murmur. Let us raise a captain and let us go back to Egypt. It's Numbers 14. So now, so now let's, let us read the description of Caleb and Joshua. The land that we inspired, church, read with me, is a land of, that's very good. My brethren, I was meditating about this. There's nothing better than to serve the Lord. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord enriches. 
If there is a rich people, that is us, rich of the blessing, rich of the grace of the Lord, of His mercy, of His care, of His protection, of, of His direction. And the Bible says more. Besides the blessing of enriching us, it does not add on pain. So we are a rich people, blessed by the Lord. The land is very good. If the Lord, here is a mystery here. If the Lord does, uh, is pleased with us, then He will place us in this land and will give us a land that flows honey milk. Our brethren, our interest in the heavenly uh, Cana, the responsibility of being there belongs to each one of us. If the Lord is pleased with us, that's why salvation is individual. Don't be re rebellious. Be, do not be afraid. And the Lord, words of Joshua and Caleb, the Lord will be with us. I could simply finish here by saying we are on a trajectory. The Bible says that this is not a, our place. We don't have a permanent city here. We're waiting for the future Jerusalem, the heavenly canon. We are on this trajectory. Are we alone? No, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with you, my brother. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with His church. We're not alone. The word that we just mentioned here is in Numbers 14.7.9. Amen, my brethren. As we come to a close, they went to spy the land. They noticed that the, the fruit was good. Ten brought uh, a report and two brought a different report because their vision was different. We as well, we are living here and we are awaiting one day to be in the heavenly Cana. Difficulty, difficulties are in this walk. Isn't it true? Uh, the brother said many, but we know whom we are serving. We know the God who we serve. It's not going to be an obstacle that is placed ahead of us, a problem that may arise, a difficulty. None of it will, allow, will cause us to desire to go back because we know where we were and where we are and what await us what in heaven and that word I leave to the church my brother have a different vision of knowing that we have a God that is powerful that has prepared for us a heavenly canna blessed be the name of the Lord and uh, the conclusion of this passage here the Bible says that of those twelve, the ten that murmured, they would not enter into the promised land. Only the two. Because they had, uh, I want to repeat, they had a different vision of what the two had. And I'm going to give an advice to, to you. And also, the advice is for me. Sometimes the difficulty is scares. The problems, they bother us, they bring sadness to our heart. But we should always remember there is a God that can do all things. Sometimes a Christian has a tape measure. He measures the width, the height, the depth. They, they even want to try to calculate the volume of the trial, but they forget why. They forget to see in this that the brother is living. He's, he's, he, it's an opportunity of a great victory that the Lord can give us. The sister can say something. Two speaks of the fellowship. Only in fellowship you can see the project of the Lord. Ten did not accept. Two represent the fellowship. It's revealed. In fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we will be victorious in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. 
since Adam and Eve, the Lord wants to have a relationship with man. But this relationship, what is shown here, is the, the mistake from Adam and Eve was the dependence. God wants us to be dependent on Him. And there, the people there wanted to go back. They want to separate this, cut down this um, relationship with God. They wanted to go away from God. They had a house. They they wanted to go back to Egypt. They they had their own thing, but they were not dependent on God. But when they went through the desert, they, they depended on God. God supplied to all the needs, and the Lord has this for us. We go through trials and difficulties, but the Lord is, takes care of us. There's one the one thing I, I said to the church. It says that the same people they saw the column of cloud guiding them giving them protection they saw the the column of fire the man had come down the sea opened up so many thi things God did and now they forgot who God was this is one of uh, what I want to ask the brethren so that you don't forget who God is who is the Lord that we serve doesn't matter what kind of problem or trial we may be going through no like the pastor said, God does not change. God is God. Amen. Let us stand up. I'm going to request a word of glorification to the Lord. Thank you for the restoring power. The God can do, can adjust everything and place us in, towards uh, the in direction of eternity. We thank you for the beauty of your holiness. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, receive uh, the better part. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to have five minutes of an interval. In order for you to drink a little water. If that's the case, and get up a little bit.